Hi everyone and welcome to my place. There was a little bit of an issue a couple of weeks ago with my great niece who came to stay. They live in the bottom of the South Island and I live at the top of the North Island and there was nowhere to put the baby. So very quickly, once the baby had been put into bed, I decided that I needed to make a little throw or a bed quilt cover for my great niece and this is what I've come up with. So if you are stuck like I've been stuck with what do we put the baby onto because I couldn't find anything and I just thought that the floor wasn't really the most appropriate place. So anyway, I had some fabric and I thought I'll show you how to do my cheats baby quilt for either a bed or on the floor for baby to be changed on or as gifts that you could give to somebody who's got a new baby. Really, really quick and easy. And uh, I've got this far, so I'll just show you, we'll come back to this to show you how to do the easy quilting, but I'll show you how it actually all comes together. It's very easy. So this is welcome to the sewing school for those that are traveling along the journey with me. Okay, so what I've done is I got some nice fabric here and when you're selecting your fabric, try and get something that's actually patchworked already or it's in little grids so that you've got something to um, work with. So you need, well, I'll show you for doing the quilting. So you need some fabric to a size that you want to make your bed cover or your quilt. You also need some padding or some wadding, which I've just used a little bit of um, Dacron front here, and it comes in all sorts of sizes. Plus you also need some backing and you, um, for underneath your layers. So pretty much, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm doing this a small one because that'll just make life a little bit easier. So you need your top sheet, you need your, oh I've done that wrong, hold on a minute, let's just do that properly. So there's your top sheet or your top of your fabric, then you, oh, I've done it all wrong, hold on, let's start again. So you've got your top fabric which goes on the top like so, and everything's got to be cut to the same length. Then you've got your padding to whichever thickness you want it to be, and then you've got your next bit. So all of this needs to be pinned around and make sure that everything is straight before you start. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of zigzagging all around those three sheets until you've got it, um, all your areas, this layer, this layer, and this layer all fixed together. Now, you can either hand stitch all your little squares to quilt it, or you can do what I'm about to do now, which is my cheats way. So here's all my layers, there's my three layers all ready to go, and I've done the zigzagging around the edges. Now the next thing is to get your sewing machine, and you can see I've got all these little wee bits in here. See those little squares there, and I've got little squares there. This is when you can go to your sewing machine and you can sew them. But before you do that, you can, what I like to do is I like to pin, go to the middle of your fabric and work from the middle out. So just pin all of those layers together and you really about now need big quilting pins like these ones here with the pearl heads. They're the best ones to use. But all I'm pretty much trying to do now is to make sure that this is all nice and as straight as I can get it before I start. And I'll do another one there. And you know how I love lots and lots and lots of pins. Just more p pinning makes the job much easier. Right now it's quite thick and it's just a matter now of going to your machine and this is when you're going to, it's going to be a little bit fiddly for a minute, but just go into there and then find your little square. So also I need to tell you that you have to be, you can't have it too thick for the, you know, for your basic sewing machine here. So right from there, it's just a matter of selecting the biggest stitch and a straight stitch. And I really do need my stool here, but hopefully I can get this right and very, very quietly just sewing along and you're going to have to push it as you go. So see how we sort of sit, that's starting, so we've got your puffy bit there and your puffy bit there and then you've got your little quilting lines going through there and I've just used an ordinary everyday stitch. Hold on, where's my pins? Oh.
Yes, yeah, so yeah, this is going to be a slow process of doing this, but let me just tell you, it's quicker than hand stitching all of that down. So once you get to that first little square, it's just a matter of stopping, put your, take your, um, your wheel here and take your needle down, lifting that up and then just turning that around and you do need a big work surface for doing this but I'll just finish this bit and then we can have a look at what it looks like. Don't forget as you stop to take the pins out, if I put that over there that will make it much easier. And it's nice having the little lines or the pattern, the demarcation of all of, on, to there, all of the little squares. And I like that it's it's all a bit random, but I'll just do, do down here so that you can all have a look at see what it's what we've achieved. Yes, you do have to give it a wee helping hand. But you can see how it's all starting. See how you've got the little puffs starting here? Isn't that just gorgeous? And so much easier than hand sewing. Okay, look, putting your needle down, is it down, and then lifting your foot up to turn that around. And it gets very, very bulky in here. These pins here, trust me, these pins are the best pins. And then when you get to the other end, it's just a matter of, you can then go on and do the next lot of stitching, but for now, this is, this will do. And then just pull that through. I'm just gonna take, break that through. Take that through to there. I'll just break that because I don't know where my scissors are. But see what I mean by your quick and easy puffing or quilting? So you've got this lovely little puffed area here and it's the light stitching line around just means that it's ready for the next lot. So you just keep going until pinning as you go to start with your next one. And if you're wise about how you go, when you do your next one, so where you're finishing off, so you might even like get to there and then just go along there, run along there, run along, and then back stitch over there. It's just going to, you're just gonna to have to work out how you do it, but I don't think it's going to matter with the double. But anyway, when you've done that, let me just turn this over. You've got this lovely little puffed area in here, so that might just show it much easier for you. Now the reason why I've put this second layer here in between the top fabric, the Dacron, and the, the next layer of fabric is because it's very, very difficult to sew onto that Dacron. And what you'll find is it gets caught underneath your fabric and then it will get into your, like under your base plate down the bottom. So just by having that protection, there's better. Now a lot of people, will say oh you don't need to do this around the edging the reason I've done that is because I didn't want that excessively fraying away it is fraying a little bit but the zigzag has held that and as you get closer to this edge here you can actually unpick that if you wanted to and then take it right to the edge but you're going to be losing a good half inch anyway when you do the casing now I will finish this and I will come back and I will show you how we bag it out and we finish the whole thing off. So until I get to this stage, let's just say I've given you enough time to do all of your squeeze so that we're all up to speed when I come back. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again another day. Mm -hmm.